us so with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Immediately after the feeding of the 5,000, Jesus insisted that his disciples get back into the boat and precede him to the other side of the sea, while he dismissed the multitudes of the people. After sending them home, he went up on the mountain by himself to pray. Night fell, and he was alone. Meanwhile, the disciples were in trouble far from shore, for a strong wind had risen, and their boat was being tossed by heavy waves. About three o'clock in the morning, Jesus came toward them, walking on the sea. When the disciples saw him walking on the water, they were terrified. In their fear, they cried out, It is a ghost! But Jesus spoke to them at once. Do not be afraid, he said. Take courage. I am here. Then Peter called to him, Lord, if it is really you, tell me to come to you walking on the water. Yes, come, Jesus replied. So Peter went over the side of the boat and walked on the water toward Jesus. But when he saw how strong the wind and the waves were, he was frightened and began to sink. Save me, Lord, he shouted. Jesus immediately reached out with his hand and caught Peter, saying, O oh, you of little faith, why did you doubt me? When they climbed back into the boat, the wind stopped. Then the disciples worshipped him, exclaiming, Truly, you are the Son of the God, of the living God. My dear brothers and sisters, the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. of some doubt by Peter. So the narrative is that uh, Jesus uh, told the disciples, hey look, I need some time, so you go across the sea and I'll catch up with you. So they did. They got into their boat and they took their boat across the sea and they were probably pretty far away from shore. And it's night, it's very dark, and the wind and the waves start to kick up. The waves are probably crashing into the boat, and they were terrified, and, and rightfully so. If you've ever been out on the open seas during a storm, it's pretty terrifying. I remember this one time when my mom and I went on this cruise many years ago, and we were sitting during dinner, and they had told us we were kind of skirting around a hurricane. Well, it didn't feel like we were skirting around a hurricane. It felt like we were going right through a hurricane. 
the waves were crashing, the boat was rocking, and you looked out the window and you could see the horizon bobbing up and down, up and down. And that night, I think everyone ended up in their stateroom, probably not feeling too well. Luckily, my mom and I don't have seasickness, so we felt like we had an entire ship to ourselves. But we did watch the waves crashing against the ship, and it did feel pretty scary. So going back to this open sea, and the, the disciples are there, and they're, they're thinking, oh my gosh, you know, what's going to happen? And then all of a sudden, here comes a figure out of nowhere. A ghost? They didn't know what it was. I mean, they're out in the middle of the sea. So all of a sudden, they're thinking, now what is this? Now we're dealing with some strange figure coming toward us. But Jesus tells them, hey, it's me. Don't worry, have courage. So Peter, I always picture him as being the dutiful little student in the front of the room. Pick me, pick me. So he's sitting there and he's like, well, Jesus, if it's you, tell me to come to you in the water. And he says, sure, come on out. The water's great. So he does. He takes that courageous first step over the ship or over the, the boat. And he starts to take the first few steps. And I can only imagine, because if it was me taking those first steps off of that boat, my fix, my gaze is totally fixed on Jesus. Like, I trust you. I believe in you. I am going to walk towards you. But what happened? Peter took his gaze off of Jesus and started to notice, wait, this is scary. The, the ocean's kind of scary, or the water's kind of scary, and the, the wind, and he starts to sink. Well, I, I could believe that. He wasn't uh, keeping his, his fix on him. So God, or Jesus has to reach out his hand and pull him up, and he says, oh, ye of little faith. Why did you doubt me? There were many, many times in my life where I had that sinking feeling, that, that uh, pit of my stomach sinking feeling of doubt. I mean, I'm sure many of you at home are feeling that sometimes too. I mean, especially now during this whole COVID thing, you know, you wonder what, what's happening in the world. You know, uh, with doubt, sometimes you feel like you know, should I have bought this house? Should I have accepted this job offer? Should I date this person? Should I marry that person? Should I have gotten that tattoo on my... Okay, well, maybe that's more regret than doubt. But we've all been there. We've all felt doubt. We also see it in the first reading today with Elijah. I mean, when I read this reading for the first time, it was so heavy. I could feel the weight on his shoulders as he said, I just want to die. Lord, I have just had enough. I should die just like my ancestors before me have died. It's, it's too much. It's too much of a burden. And I'm sure there's many times that you felt that there was a lot of burden. But what does God do? You know, Elijah goes out to Mount Sinai and he gets out on that mountain and Yahweh says, what are you doing here? This isn't where you belong. You're a prophet. You shouldn't be here. So he sends him up to the mountain, and he and now Elijah is faced with first this, this whipping wind, and then he's faced with an earthquake, and then a fire. And you know what? God wasn't in any of those things. But where he was was in that gentle whisper, the gentle whisper that we all should be looking for and listening to so that we too can have courage so we too can have less doubt i'm going to look at my notes now um, so in your doubtful moments trust in the lord proverbs has a, a sorry proverbs um, says, trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not lean on your own understanding. God has you. He will let you walk. He won't let you walk alone, just like he didn't let Elijah walk alone. He sent him 7,000 prophets. Just like right now, 
during this whole experience of COVID, there's probably moments where you feel a little alone. But he sends you thousands of others to go through this experience with. And he's also with you too. In the most troubled of waters and in the highest mountaintops, he will be there with you. The road not taken was not taken for a reason. Trust that you are right where you need to be right now. Doubt and faith both are a state of mind. While doubt creates the darkest moments in our, our finest hours, while faith brings the finest moments in our darkest hours. Have faith, my brothers and sisters. All you need is the faith of God to get you through. And that is, that is the gospel of the Lord. Amen. Amen.